Uh, so in the first half of this lecture, I talk about the practical methods, computing and generating permutation of the set AN, and also computing and generating all subsets of um, AN, which is the set of uh, 1 to N. Um, so this theme will continue in the second part of today's lecture. But now we turn into the computing comp and generating the other two uh, items that we have learned in this kind of series so far. The first one is our combination The second one is our permutation of AN. Um, so I'm going to first to just kind of recap and remind everyone what this uh, permutation and combination is. So the example that I that I gave uh, two lectures ago. Um, so five students Alice, Bob, Charlie, Daisy, Eva, and let's just represent it by one, two, three, four, five. So the way to think about it is let's see if I ask how, how many number of three-member team, three-member basketball team where order doesn't matter? And in last week's uh, homework, we basically say this is the number of uh, three-member team is represented by this. We call it three combination. <coughs> and for this case, we have five students. So then the mean is kind of C53. Um, and the answer of 353 is 10. And we do this basically just by this thing. Okay. Um, one, two, three. <coughs> one, two, four. One, two, five. One, two. Uh, one, three, four. One, three, five. One, three, six. One, four, five. Uh, and then you just keep listing it. Two, three, four. <coughs> two, three, five. Two, four, five. Three, four, five. So these are all 10 of them. Let's see. Yep. So these are all 10 of them. Okay. Uh, the next concept is called uh, permutation. Uh, think of it as a three-member team where all the matters. And the examples that I gave was, think about their three spots. The first one is uh, captain. The second one is, uh, let's say, starter. And then the third spot is reserve. And there are P five three of them, and how many of them are total? What's P five three? Combination five three times 
is 60. Again, the way to think about it is we have 10 different combination teams. Sorry, we have 10 different three member teams. And for each of those three member teams, there are three factorial, many ways of arranging those three people. And when you put those three people on this captain spot, starter spot, reserve spot, so there are that many. So, um, so it's this. PNR is CNR times R factorial. Okay. So this is a recap. Uh, so we're going to start the second part, which is talking about how to compute and generate CNR. Um, so we just said PNR is equal to CNR times R factorial. So from this, so this is a uh, simple algebra. Okay, just move the R factorial to the other side. Um, and this CNR is my preferred way of uh, representing the number. But I want to tell you that there are many other notations which mean the same thing. So you see people write this, and you also see people write this, okay? But it's just different ways of representing the same number. Okay, different textbook, different people, different countries, different professors, they use different ways of representing this number. Okay. So I'm going to talk about how to compute this. Uh, let's kind of start with an example. Uh, five students, one, two, three, four, five, mix a three-member team. where the first spot is captain, the second spot is starter, and then the third one is reserve. And I want to count how many different ways. Out there. So let's just use the multiplication principle. So how many options do we have for captains? Daisy? Uh, five. Five? Okay. So, how many different ways do we have for the starter? Four. Four. How many options do we have for reserve? Three. Very good. Uh, again, each of these is independent. No matter who we pick from as the captain, there are still four remaining people to be the starter. So, that's, that, that's why this is 60. Now, uh, We are going to generate, generalize this a little bit. Let's say that n students Let's say there are n students One, two, two n Mix an R member team where all the matters so there are many spots using the same uh, logic or method methodology, 
How many options do we have for the first spot? And what about the second one? N minus one. N minus one. N minus two. Now here's the trick question. How many options do we have for the last spot? So uh, there are how many spots, right? So there's one, two. So this is the this is the one. So this is the the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. So instead of n minus r is n minus r plus one. That's what I meant by trick. Uh, usually people will say, oh, n minus r. But when you think about it, because we start with n n minus 1, n minus 2 and if there are many spots there this is n, r, n minus r plus 1 uh, so this is basically the formula for permutation n to r now putting this together this is what we are trying to say cnr is equal to pnr divided by r factorial and the formula is m times n minus 1 all the way to n minus r plus 1 and below is r r minus 1 to 1 uh, just remember there are r many terms here because in the bottom denominator is r factorial at the top there are all many terms here. So let's do some computation. Ah, let's just do it here. Using this formula, what is C6? What is at the top? which is 2 plus 1. So it is 15. Let's do one more. What about C7 choose 3? What is at the top? Isaac, do you know what's at the top? So we want three of these numbers. So it would be seven times six. six, and then one more, which is five. And then at the bottom is three factorial. So it's three times two times one. So it's 35. Um, let me take a pause here. In terms of how to use this formula to compute the number, how does everyone think about the computation? Okay, good. Uh, so then let's get to the, the other part, the twin of this. So we talk about computing. No, now we talk about how to generate it. Okay.
So now how to generate our subsets of AF. Uh, let's do an example. How to generate the, let's say, two subsets of A4. So do you know what this question is? It basically lists out 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4. So that, that's, that's what the question is asking. Now, first of all, let me just call it out. Uh, we kind of already know the answer. We kind of already know one method to do it. Because remember in the first in the in the first half of today's lecture, we basically using again the binary number or that algorithm that I described to say okay, let's just kind of list out all the subsets. So there are eight of this, and then eight more. So, uh, well, if you want to find the two subsets, all of them, why don't you just kind of look it up? So you have this, you have this, you have this. Let me see, you have this. Okay. So remember this one, uh, the set of, let's say, one, two, three, four. So this one meaning three and four are in. So it's uh, three, four. So this one mean two and four. Are in. So this one, uh, let's say two, three. This one, one, three. This one, one, two. This one is one, four. Okay, so these are six of them. So we already know a way to do it, but it's just not very smart. Okay, you generate all, all 16 of them. And then you pick the one that has only two members into it. Okay? So we can do it, but I'm now talking about a better way of how to do this. Again, I want to emphasize this is very, very useful. Okay? So, uh, so I'm going to uh, explain an algorithm. to generate our subset of AN in what I call, uh, let's say, cographic order. Does anyone know what, what this term means? Uh, people prefer to use this term, uh, but it basically means dictionary order. Uh, so remember, like when you when you look at a dictionary, you know kind of A, B, C is in that order, right? So you basically expect the 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 word, let's say, uh, a branch is going to be before boy, and then but then bot is going to be before boy. So that's what we mean by uh, lexicographic order. So alphabetical? Yeah. Um, so um, in the terms of our subset, you could basically think about the ABC is now 1, 2, 3, N. So because of that, you would expect the number, let's say 1, 5, 6, will happen uh, after 1, 5, 7. And then one three, let's say one three four, would be before that. Okay, so we want to be able to know how to generate an R subset in this kind of. Uh, I'm just going to call it dictionary order. Okay, and I'm going to illustrate this with the problem of uh, A six. A6 So step one 
start with one, two, three. Okay. And then step two. Find the largest number k such that k plus 1 is still smaller than 6, meaning it's still kind of one of the options. K, k plus 1 is still one of the options. And k plus 1 is not already in the set. So what it basically means is, uh, let's say if 1, 2, 3 as an example. So the largest number 3, which is k, k plus 1, which means 4. So 4 is still, 4 is not here. Okay? And then 4 is still kind of one of the options. So what this is described is, okay, I find the number 3. And then step 3 is to replace the right hand side of K by K plus 1 k plus 2, all the way. So what it means is, uh, so this one, 3 is the number that we, that we find. So we replace it by a plus 1, and there are only 3 subset, so this is it. And then 4 is the number that is the largest. So, so far so good? And then now if we find the largest number k such that k plus 1 is still in the set. So 6, does, 6 is not that number because we can't replace it by 7. 7 is not part of this. So then that means the largest number is actually 2. And then we replace it by 3, 4. Um, and then 3, 5, 3, 6, and then 4, 5, and then 4, 6, and then 4, 5, sorry, and then 5, 6. Now, um, I want to say that uh, I'm going to continue with the 2 as well. Um, People react to this example and the algorithm very differently, okay? Some people like, okay, you tell me the rules, I'm just going to follow it. Uh, and then I also know some people look at this and say, okay, I know how to do it. I don't know what you're talking about there, but I know how to do it, okay? So different people really have a different preference on whether they want a set of rules so that they can follow, okay? Let's say this one, one, five, six, what is the biggest what is the largest number k that k plus 1 is smaller and k plus 1 is not on the list? Is it 1, 5, or 6? 5? Uh, but 5 plus 1, which is 6, is already on the list. So um, the largest number k such that k plus 1 is still smaller than 6, but that number is not on the list. Yeah, so that number is k, is 1. 1 is the number where the k plus 1, which is 2, is not on the list, and 2 is still within the set. And the algorithm asks you to say, okay, then let's just replace it by 2, 3, 4. It's always important to take a step back, what we are trying to do. We are trying to generate all the three subset so that they are in dictionary order. 
So this is basically describing to you a procedure, how you could do it. So in this case, what is the largest? Uh, but before that, what about 132? If it's in the axiographic order, then shouldn't 132 be 4, 134? Um, so we are talking about uh, the subset where the kind of order does not matter. So we are generating the R subset. So 132 is actually the same as 123. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. So what is the, if I apply this algorithm, what is the largest K such that K plus 1 is smaller than 6 and K plus 1 is not on the list already? Mm -hmm. So 4 is the K, because 5 is not on the list, 5 is still the option. Using the algorithm, we basically say we replace it by 5, 6, etc. And now it's a 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 6, 3, 5, 6, and then 4, 5, 6. How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we got all of them, 20. Uh, to just check, 6, 20 of this, and we got all of them. Can I get a show of sign? Good. Uh, let me see. So we are going to move to the last part of this, which is very simple. Dot two dot three, the last part. We now want to compute and generate P and R. Okay. Now, first of all, the compute is very simple. We talk about it. The formula is n times n minus one. The only part that is tricky is remember this is n minus r plus one because we want to have r terms how many of them okay so this is formula now uh, to generate okay. so uh, <laughs> the algorithm is a bit of a a little bit like cheating so the step one is you apply what we just talked about To generate our subset. And then the second step you apply what is in the first half of the first half of the lesson to find uh, all our factorial permutation of each our subsets. And I'm going to use an example to illustrate, but first I want everyone to just look at this to, to understand what, what we're talking about. So if you use the procedure that we just talked about two minutes ago, then you can basically generate all the our subset. Then after that, uh, to the point that Wafi asked a little bit, let's say you generate one of the subset is one, two, three. Now you want to find all the permutation of the one, two, three, and we know there are six of them. And we talk about how to do it in the first half of the lecture. 
So let's kind of do a, an example. And then everyone will have a, an opportunity to practice that in homework. So the example is generate three permutation of A4. Uh, before I do that, apply, before I use this algorithm to do that, how many are there in total? Um, so it, it is basically this, right? This many. And what's the answer to that? Oh. Mm -hmm. So we're going to apply this procedure. How to do that? Okay. The first step is let's generate the three subset of one, two, three, four. And how many are there? What is this? Four. Yeah, I think that's what you're computing. So there are four of them. Uh, so from the previous lecture, so from the from a little bit earlier, we know <laughs> that what I call dictionary order. So these are the four. Are you with me so far? This is the kind of four sub, sorry, three subsets of A4 in dictionary order. For each of them, how many permutations can I make out of the three numbers? Three factorial? Mm -hmm, six. So Eight. now this one, this is meant to be an arrow. Okay? So for the first one, you got one, two, three. One, three, two. Two, one, three. Two, three, one. Three, one, two. Three, two, one. Uh, so I just kind of turned this one, two, three into six of them. Now I do want to call out that the algorithm that I use is different from the one that I told you. Remember the one that I told you how to generate this is you have one, two. And then you basically put three at different spot. And then I'm gonna find more space to do this. So we have we have one, two, or two, one when there are two numbers. And for each of those, you can basically put it like this. So if you use this method that I taught at the beginning, first half of the class, the order you get with 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3. But you can see the order that I get is actually a little bit different. Uh, so I use a different way to generate a number. It's just this is what I used to. Okay. Now, um, for this one, you could basically just copy this. Uh, we are now we are arranging one, two, four instead of one, two, three. You can basically replace the, the three by four. So then this is one, two, four, one, four, two, two, one, four, two, four, one, four, one, two, four, two, one. Uh, now this one is a little bit complicated because mentally now you basically say well this is 2, this is 3 so if you want to replace it so then that will be 1, 3, 4 okay. okay, mentally 
map the 3 to 2, map the 4 to 2, because we are just concerned about the order. So final one, just map these three numbers, see there. So these are the 24 of the three permutation of A4. Any questions? Okay. So I think that's the end of today.